long as Namor lives, Imperius Rex! Namor, the Submariner, origin explored. Called by some Aquaman's Marvel equivalent, Namor was one of the first heroes introduced in the mainstream Marvel Universe, or what we also know as Earth-616. Namor is a half-human, half-Atlantean royalty who is a ruler of Atlantis. He was the first of three Golden Age superheroes introduced by Marvel, including the original Human Torch and Captain America. He's been a part of some elite teams like the Avengers and X-Men, and even fought alongside Captain America during World War II. He's known to be more of an anti-hero due to his temper and arrogance. He would go to any heights to achieve what he wants. He was not only one of the first heroes, but also the first mutant introduced into the comics. So how does this Atlantean royalty fit into the Marvel Universe? Let us find out. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Namor Origins Namor was created by Bill Everett and made his debut in 1939 in Timely Comics Marvel Comics No. 1. In 1920, Namor's father, Leonard McKenzie, was on an expedition to find the Helmet of Power. His ship got stuck on icy flows, so he decided to use some explosives to get the boat out. Unknown to him, the explosives caused significant damage to the city of Atlantis, which was right below them. The Atlantean ruler, Emperor Thakor, commanded his daughter and warriors to go to the surface and investigate the problem. Princess Fen decided to go alone as she did not want to put anybody else at risk. After arriving on the ship, Finn immediately gets captured by the crew due to her not being able to speak the language and not being able to establish any communication. However, her time on board led to Princess Finn and Leonard falling in love, as he had found her beautiful from the day he set his eyes on her. They were then married to each other aboard the ship. Emperor Thakor sent out a search party for his daughter many weeks after receiving no news of her whereabouts. After discovering the ship, the Atlantean warriors attacked everyone on the boat, thinking they had been keeping her prisoner. But unfortunately, before Finn could stop the attack and convey the truth, Leonard McKenzie was already killed. Finn then came back to Atlantis and found out that her marriage had resulted in her pregnancy. Soon, she gave birth to Namor, the first hybrid born between a human and an Atlantean. What makes Namor so powerful? Much of Namor's powers come from the Atlantean heritage. He is a powerful mutant who has all the powers that Atlanteans possess, like breathing underwater, a longer lifespan, and physical abilities. However, his abilities are much more significant than common Atlanteans due to his royal status. He is a unique hybrid of Homo Romanus and Homo Superior physiologies. Namor is one of the strongest characters in the Marvel Universe. He can easily pick up buses or ships. He is strong enough to stop attacks from both Thor and Iron Man simultaneously with ease. He is capable of moving at incredible speeds. He can create whirlpools by swimming in circles and can reach up to a rate of 345 miles per hour or 300 knots. He has superhuman reflexes and is capable of easily dodging bullets. He's fast enough to make the naked eye miss his movement. He has incredible stamina and durability due to his mutant and royal status. His body can easily handle the immense underwater pressure. He is bulletproof and fireproof. He can quickly deal with high impact attacks without being injured. Namor's body can heal itself just by stepping in the water. His healing rate is more than any standard Atlantean. He can use marine telepathy to control sea life and relay messages to Atlanteans. He can use animal mimicry to channel the powers of aquatic animals like whales or electric eels or even use their radar powers. He has the capability of atmokinesis, which means he can manipulate rain and storm clouds to cause heavy rain. The rain is severe enough that it can even extinguish Johnny Storm's flames. After Atlantis kidnapped Hydro Man, Namor siphoned part of his power and used this power to cause mass his floods. He possesses vestigial wings on both his ankles, which help him fly. Although the origin of his power is unknown, he can fly faster than a military aircraft. Namor's greatest weapon is the Trident of Neptune. The original Trident of Neptune was forged by Cyclops using adamantine and Neptune's essence. The Trident is a powerful weapon that can manipulate water and create force fields. When the Atlanteans led astray and started following Set, Neptune and his royal followers fought Set on Earth and defeated the Snake God. Neptune lived with the Atlanteans for a while, bringing an age of peace. Before he returned to Olympus, he had a replica of his trident constructed in the Brazier of Living Flame, leaving it behind for the ruler of Atlantis. Deadly Story of Namor vs. The Avengers The story begins in issue number 9 of The Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. 2018, we see Tiger Shark and Stingray locked in a fight, as Stingray was out in the ocean on a boat, apparently on vacation. The two take their fight to the seas, where Stingray urges Tiger to let him help, and that his sister Diane, to whom Stingray is married, misses her brother a lot. During the fight, Namor suddenly makes an appearance. He tells the two that they have two choices, either they join him in the war against the humans, or leave the ocean immediately. Sting 
Stingray tries to talk some sense into him by telling him that that is unnecessary, and as his oldest friend from the land, he urges Namor not to make any rash decisions. Namor repeatedly punches Stingray, breaking his helmet visor and telling him that he no longer has any friends from the surface. He then attacks Stingray mercilessly and finally reveals his war sharks to destroy him as an intruder to the sea, leading to Stingray's death. Namor then turns to a scared tiger shark and asks him the same question, to which Tiger replies that he's in. The two then swim away to the depths of Atlantis as Namor goes to gather more allies. The Avengers, constituting Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Captain Marvel, She-Hulk, and Ghost Rider, come to Atlantis a few days before this. They are soon attacked by Atlantean warriors, although they keep urging that they are not here to fight, but to get an audience with their king, Namor. The fighting ensues for quite some time, with all the Avengers trying to cause minimal damage. Soon, one of the Atlanteans blows a horn, summoning a fantastic sea beast, which swallows up Ghost Rider. But thankfully, he does not perish and finds his way out of the beast's mouth. The Avengers do not destroy the sea beast, as they do not want to offend Namor. Meanwhile, in a different part, Black Panther is trying to find the men from Roxxon held by Namor, but he manages to trip on a booby trap, which summons Namor. Minutes later, Namor arrives. He accuses Black Panther of how he dared to show up in his realm. Avengers arrive at his aid. As the Avengers try to make him listen, he refuses and attacks him. Thor and Iron Man attack Namor, but he quickly stops him, to their surprise. Even Carol Danvers or She-Hulk can cause no damage. Captain America then steps up and says that the next Avenger Namor faces will be him. Due to their previous history, Namor grants Captain a few minutes to tell their story and why they came. Cap urges him to hand over the culprits because if not, there will be a war in Atlantis, and Avengers do not want that. They try to help Namor and wanted him to receive justice for what happened in Atlantis. They were there to help him in any way possible and hope Namor would let them do so. Namor tells Cap that he does not want their help and asks him not to come back again. The Avengers can later be seen leaving with the culprits who destroyed Atlantis. Namor then goes to a cave where he comes across Atlantean children and urges them to come with him, stating he would take care of them. But the children swim away. The children were tired of living in the waste that Atlantis had become and decided to go to Earth, thinking the Avengers might be able to help them. But before they could get there, the toxic air had killed the children. As the humans watched on and laughed, Namor then declares that the reason Avengers came was not to prevent war, but it was already time for war, and he would not be losing. Namor then forms his team, known as Defenders of the Deep, who are something of a contrast to the Avengers of the Earth. Where else has Namor appeared? A possible reference was made to Namor in the movie Iron Man 2. On Nick Fury's map of superhuman activity, there is an indicator in the middle of the ocean, which presumably indicates a being with aquatic abilities, hence Namor. A live-action Namor movie has been in the works since 2002. David Self wrote a screenplay, and Chris Columbus was in line to direct. Jonathan Mustow was named a director in 2006, and 2009 claimed the project was still alive and ongoing. Kevin Feige told in an interview that specific contracts had left the movie in limbo, and using Namor in a film might be complicated. Namor has made an appearance in many animations. He had his segment in the Marvel superheroes and was voiced by John Vernon. He appeared in the Spider-Man episode called Wrath of the Submariner and was voiced by Vi Perrin. He also appeared in the Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends episode 7, Little Heroes, and was expressed by Wilm Woodson. He appeared in the Fantastic Four episode, Now Comes the Submariner, voiced by James Warwick. He appeared in Avengers, United They Stand, to rule Atlantis, expressed Raul Trujillo. He appeared in Fantastic Four, World's Greatest Heroes episode, Imperious Rex, and the Atlantis Attacks, and was told by Michael Adamwaith. He was said to appear as an antagonist in Fox Kids, Daredevil animated series, but the show never went into production. He he was also slated to appear in the Fantastic Four, but was banned due to rights issues, and instead, a thinly veiled substitute of the name Prince Triton was created for the series. What does the future hold for Namor? Namor, the Submariner, is one of the most prominent Marvel characters, but still hasn't appeared in the MCU. Although there were expectations, he hasn't shown as part of the Illuminati in Doctor Strange 2 either. But aside from this fact, fans are convinced that the Atlantean ruler will soon appear in the MCU with the upcoming Phase 4 movie, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. There had been a long debate surrounding the antagonist for the sequel of Black Panther, but there has been no definite answer so far. Recent set photos show that there will be likely underwater scenes, which again points out that Namor could be part of the movie. Black Panther does not boast a vast catalog of rogues in this story, and the impressive ones like Claw and Killmonger were already used in the first movie. Although Submariner isn't a Black Panther villain, 
He does have a long-standing rivalry with T'Challa, which can easily be explored in the film, giving fans some fascinating stuff. There have been some speculations about who might be cast in the role of Namor, but there have been no official confirmation so far. The Submariner remains a favorite candidate for the fans for the post of the upcoming villain of Black Panther 2. Unless Marvel Studios announces something different, he's likely to remain the fan's choice. The Submariner has always been extremely powerful, and even more so recently. He has had quite a rocky relationship with people from Earth. Still, he's always been a benevolent ruler of the people of Atlantis, to the extent that he even sacrificed the woman he loved to save Atlantis. Although his character can be called morally gray, he would do anything to protect Atlantis and its inhabitants, so crossing certain lines is no problem. The only thing remains to see the mighty power of Namor on screen, and if everything goes as planned, more like our wishes. Hopefully, we'll have a live-action Namor soon enough. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone. I am stronger. I am finished. Ah!